and welcome to another sort of convoyer video uh today we're going to be breaking down simona her kit and as always this is not a video of saying oh hey this person is op or this person is strong or this person you know is bad or trash this is just breaking down how their skills work um kind of theory crafting on what teams these characters are going to be used for and then you make the conscious decision yourself if you want to go ahead and get that character or not um, I'm not in the mode of doing tier lists. There's tons of other content creators who tells you about tier lists. I'm just here to let you know what the character does so that you're able to go ahead and decide if they're good for your team or not. So without further ado, let's go ahead and break it down. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is talk about the winter skill tree. So for rank one, uh, actually before you even do that, let's just go ahead and jump into our trait. So increases Simona's attack and defense by 5% at the start of the turn. And then she grants Armor of Ice for two cooldowns. And Armor of Ice is a buff that gains a physical shield that equals 60% of the caster's M attack and immunity to frosty tile effects. After being hit by a melee attack, inflicts a movement one down on the attacker for two turns. And if you go ahead and go ahead and max this out and you get her maxed out, it changes it to <clears throat> increases Simona's attack and defense by 15%. When she has a shield, uh, attack and defense are additionally increased by another 10%. And she does, and she becomes immune to attribute debuffs. So she doesn't get any of these attribute debuffs right here, which is really nice. And then at the start of the turn, she gains armor of ice. And then if she is dying after being attacked, she immediately gains armor of ice can be activated up to one time per battle so above all she is like the other type of ice mages where they're tanky um they have a lot of sustainability and that's kind of like where her trait is but it also gives her some pretty good stat uh steroids i think my favorite part is that it makes her immune to attribute debuffs i love that right there i think that's pretty cool um as long as she has the um as long as she has a shield on so finding ways in order to keep her with a shield keeps her with the attack bonuses and keeps her with the um with that immunity to attribute debuffs which i think is really nice so that's it for the for her for her trait now let's go into skill trees so you get winter which is the if i do yeah winter is going to be her kind of like her dps tree so rank one you get icy blast which is a magical damage it deals 75 percent aoe damage to the first enemy in each line uh within a two by three area and then inflicts speed down and movement one uh movement down both level one for two turns and it knocks the targets back by two tiles i like this skill a lot personally um i'm always a big fan of debuffs anyone who knows me knows that I'm, i love debuff strategies and honestly if you're playing rpg games debuff strategies is always going to be the best because when you're able to debuff enemies it makes it so that you're able to um to you know, to do the content a lot better the speed one down is pretty good because minus 50 speed is a pretty pretty strong uh being able to slow them down the move one tile is pretty good too so she's able to zone them and then she also has the knock back which means that when she pushes them back they're going to have a harder time coming up so it either can allow your team to move away from range of melee or it just overall makes it so that she's able to control that field in order to keep them at bay so that you can reposition yourself overall i like this skill a lot um the next skill rank three is going to be her ice assault it's an instant uh she selects one tile within a cross shaped range around her and charges to that location attacking all enemies along the line um she deals ice damage equal to 100 percent of the physical shield value simona gains warrior of frost for two turns and warrior of frost is let's see it reduces damage taken by 30 percent and increases the distance the character can move by one within frosty tiles um, so this right here is a pretty cool skill because one, it gives her the ability to um, reposition herself to move forward either in or um, in or out of combat. 
it also provides her the damage is 100% of the physical shield. So whatever her shield value is, it's going to do that damage whenever anyone it hits, which is really nice. It reduces damage taken, so it makes it harder in order to break those shields and do damage to her. And it gives her move one, so anything that gives any type of mobility is really good whenever she's on frosty tiles. Even though she's going to gain immunity to frosty tiles with her trait and when she has a shield on, whenever she's um, walking on frosty tiles, she also gets an additional movement, which means that being able to slow down enemies on frosty tiles while she has movement on frosty tiles pretty nice um in order to again to zone uh to zone the enemies out i like that a lot rank five is a reaction after her armor of ice is destroyed she deals 50 uh 50 magical damage to all enemies within two tiles of her and inflicts movement three on the target for, on the target for one turn i think this is pretty cool um armor of ice like i said is that buff that she gets under her for her traits and then once the armor of ice is, is blown up and taken out it gives movement three which makes it so that it reduces their movement by three tiles the whoever inflicted and destroyed the armor i'm assuming for one turn so it makes it so that they are pretty much like anyone who has that much movement taken out they're stuck in that they're stuck in that position for one turn there is no moving around after that happens not bad reaction it works well with her trait i think that's pretty cool her rank seven is a magical damage single target attack that deals 80 percent damage and inflicts movement three for two turns if the target has moved the debuff already it additionally inflicts frozen for two turns and what frozen is is that they cannot take any action or be passed through and gains immunity to all physical damage the effect is disabled upon taking fire aoe damage so that's a pretty cool skill because you know when you're already going to be doing a lot of movement down skills kind of like um icy blast um yeah with icy blast or with the with the reaction right here it, it it's not going to be hard in order to place a movement down debuff on them so getting movement three for two turns which again is ridiculous and it additionally afflicts frozen for two turns when frozen just taking them out the fight completely is really nice um i can definitely see that used with like high priority targets that you want to like tanks any tank who has those abilities where they automatically defend the reaction the assist skills um freezing that tank down so they can't do that so that way you can destroy squishies is really good and that way you can blow them up so flash freezing i do like this skill i think this is a pretty decent skill as well the range is pretty awesome on it as well rank nine you get ice made sword uh magical damage a single target attack simona deals 110 percent damage if she has attacking if she is attacking enemies with movement down or who are currently on frosty tiles the damage she deals is increased by 30 percent so i so this right here it just utilizes her kit more where you're going to have icy tiles on the ground and or if they have the movement debuff which they should have when you're having her on there on your team it's going to do that 110 percent damage but then also you get that 30 percent damage increase as well i think that's pretty cool um it's i mean i just like the way that her kit with all these skills they all work with each other and i think it's pretty fleshed out so far and then of course the rank 11 skill winter doomsday magical damage simona selects one tile within a cross shape so you got that cross shape right there you select one tile uh, around her and deals 70 percent ice damage to mm. all enemies within a five by three in the target direction and then simona summons an ice wall in the three center columns or center tiles if the tile is occupied she inflicts frozen on the target for one turn and pre cooldown one turn so this skill right mm. here has a one turn cooldown and it does a five by three tiles and everything down that middle right there down that middle tile is going to be uh, getting ice blocks and if someone is in those ice blocks they get frozen for one turn um pretty good again just more zoning skills 
and just more ways in order to control the battle and, and control the combat themselves. And of course, Frozen as a nice skill. The the downside on this is that you do have to one turn cooldown, so you have to be careful with that. So you know you're gonna have to plan ahead when you're using this skill. And if you know how the speed and initiatives work in the game, you can kind of figure out when it's a good time to drop this skill down. So then that way you can help your team and zone out the enemies, freeze them down, do what you gotta do. Um, but above all, pretty good skill, uh, decent damage AOE skill, and um, um, and a, an all powerful uh, zoning ability. So my feelings for this with this side right here for the winter is that it does okay damage a lot of aoe skills and the ability to just control the battlefield while still doing decent damage um her shield is going to be very important with that um with her trait and having shields especially when you're using the um this skill right here ice assault where it does 100% of the physical shield damage so if you have physical shield on her i think that's going to be a pretty pretty decent um pretty cool um strong skill probably gonna be one of her more powerful damaging skills but i'm not 100 percent sure um i what, what i'm looking at right now is all on the test uh the test server and of course ratios and numbers are subject to change um and i haven't tested her out i haven't used her i don't want to not because i don't like her it's just more lines of i enjoy more reading the kits and theory crafting um but yeah, so above all, I like that winter damage kit. I think that's a pretty cool kit. And let's go ahead and move over to the ice shield kit, okay? So rank one for ice shield, you get ice cone, which is selects a location and deals 80% ice and is an AOE damage to all enemies within one tile around that target location. So a, a small AOE skill that does ice damage on there, it's okay, it's, you know, it's okay. Especially when it's, it's, it's not great, but especially when you compare it to this one right here, which has a wider range and it drops a lot of debuffs um the ice shield right here is just for doing ice damage and putting you know when you use ice skills it makes ice tiles so just doing that um uh, that's kind of the only purpose of this one right here it's a very small range the rank three ice made armor simona selects a target direction and all allies within a three by four area in that direction and all allies within three tiles to the left and right of the tile uh, occupied by Simona gains ice armor gains armor of ice and regeneration one for two turns if she already had armor of ice it decreases energy consumption by one point so this skill right here is pretty cool um, it gives the ability to give ice armor uh, to herself and to her allies it looks like as well if I'm reading that right um selects the target direction and all allies within three by four area in that direction all eyes within that time the left and right uh yeah so they all gain um armor of ice and that's a pretty significant right there that's a pretty significant uh range so you can pretty much get your whole team and give them armor of ice which again gains a physical shield of 60 percent of the caster's m attack and immunity and immunity to frosty tiles so this allows you to put frosty tiles in your enemy and your allies don't get affected by frosty tiles but it also gives them that armor vice which is pretty cool and then that regeneration one which is um the character recovers 10 percent of their hp at the end of the time so that nice little that nice little tidbit of healing is pretty cool. And if she already has armor of ice, it reduces the energy consumption by one. So instead of two points, it's a one point, which gives you a lot more room in order to do other skills on the kit. I think this is pretty cool. I do like this skill a lot. Um, I, I definitely do enjoy ice shield a lot, um, especially that regeneration. Anything that gives a little bit of healing, I'm always a fan of. Anything that gives any sort of like a uh, little bit of help and buffing it's always good for i believe her rank seven she does have a leader's aura which is for all union allies increases attack you will never get this this is a skippable skill completely you would only grab this one right here flash freezing 
they're with their unless you unless you don't have a union character who has like who has a um leader's aura like i believe um you know gloria she's a union she has a leader's aura if you don't have gloria and if you don't have there's one more i can't think on the top of my head that has a leader's aura if you don't have any of those i can i can see you using this but honestly I would skip this. I wouldn't waste the, the points on this. I would just get the flash freezing. That's going to be a lot better. But if you're using a lot of union characters and you don't have anyone that has a leader's aura, go for it. But I do believe that there's other characters that you can have that like look like rare characters that you can have. Not rare. Uh, epic characters that you can get that has the same thing right here. And if I remember correctly, I think there is one that has this and it'd be better off to use it on them. But this is if you're building a union team. Her rank 9 skill is Ice Attack, which makes her basic deal 80% magical damage and inflicts move one, move 1 in healthy on healthy targets, lasting for 1 turn. This isn't bad, but I, my issue with this is that it's only for healthy targets. So if the targets are anything else but healthy, you're not going to get that move 1. Personally, I think Ice Mage Sword I would more likely get. That's definitely way more um, viable, in my opinion. Also, the damage to it is, is a lot better. And um, that move or the that that move down or the increase in damage on like I feel like this right here is significantly better than the ice attack arrow, honestly. And then for rank eleven, will to survive. If if Simona is dying at the start of the turn, she recovers 50% HP and two energy, and the effect has a two turn cooldown. I actually like this skill. I like this a lot. This is some really good primo survivability skill. Um, if you pack this onto the fact that she's going to have the, the arm, ice armor and the shields on there, and if she's still in dying, she gets 50% of her HP and two energy so that she can use at the start of her turn, which allows her to go and use rotate other skills. I think that's really cool. Um, this is a really good skill to have. Above all, the ice shield tree is not all that great in my opinion. Um, if you do anything, you, there's some skills under the ice shield tree that are really good. Like ice made armor is a fantastic skill in my opinion. Um, protection of ice is okay. You know, when hit by an attack from an enemy with move, the damage taken is decreased. Since you are going to have a lot of enemies that's going to have that move, uh, move down. Actually, I don't even think I talked about that. I think I might have skipped over this, which I do apologize. I just now noticed that. But this right here is a is a really good reaction in my opinion because you're going to be they're going to be you're going to be inflicting movement down all the time, and so that's going to make their damage onto her no significantly less so it's going to decrease that damage so i think this is a really good skill um i still think that this one right here is probably the better one because that move three lock is pretty good but honestly i think this one is more actually no no i'm, I'm gonna take that back i think this one is better because this one is, is is gonna happen more often this one right here is going to happen way more often and you're going to get way more value out of this one where this one right here is after her armor of ice is destroyed the um it does the damage so i personally think that this right here protection of ice is going to be a better um i personally wouldn't get this and then i, I definitely wouldn't get the ice attack but the rank 11 so yeah i think the rank 11 the rank five and the rank three skills are really good like even if i'm if i'm going to build her i would build everything under the winter tree and then i would get only those three extra skills and i think that's going to make her the most diverse ability where you can either make her super tanky and still do some good damage or make her just all out dps and even as an all out dps she's still going to do suitable damage um ice made armor is probably my favorite skill in this tree only because of how much versatility it is to use and help out other people on your team um if i had to go with what gear i would use on her if i had to make that judgment call um i would say starry starry sky heritage is pretty decent uh but that's because you know it gives that hp increase and then if you if you get it maxed out to uh five you get a 10% HP increase and it grants 6% uh, more M attack. And you know, her shield is her armor of ice shield is based off of how much M attack she has. And I think that's pretty good. That's going to make her, you know, suitably tanky 
um the skeleton staff is okay you know it gives that hp increase and it recovers one energy when an ally is defeated so this this right here is when you're going into a fight and you and you're expecting your team to, to to be hurt and even then like when your team is getting killed off you're only going to get so much extra energy you really would only be getting this because of the hp and that's really it and that's like it, it is what it is it's not ideal honestly the starry sky heritage is gonna be a lot better uh focus wand is when unharmed increases the maximum range of a single target skills by one tile and increases m attack by three percent when launching when launching a single target attack this is a pretty cool one um i don't know if, if, if you're looking at her kit she doesn't really have many single target skills which is kind of the, the 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 problem she has a lot of aoe skills so that's what that's where you're kind of really falling off on on that one piece of on that one piece of gear it's it's if, if she had more you know more single target i could see that going on but it, it's 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 okay just not for her i wouldn't use this on her at all um it's and then also she has to be unharmed because like that unharmed would have been nice if this would if you could have used this on her other skills but since she doesn't have a lot of single target skills when i think about it it's not all that great um this is probably the worst piece i've seen so far uh resentment broom increases aoe damage by 15 after dealing damage with an active attack there is a 25 percent chance to inflict life loss equal to 20 percent m attack this one right here is probably my favorite right now i mean we haven't looked at the other ones yet but as of right now this is probably my favorite one um the the debuff loses a certain amount of hp at the end of each turn i think that's really good life loss for one turn so as long as you keep dishing out aoe you're going to keep getting that life loss and, and and removing uh 20 percent magic attack on the target. yeah this is probably the best one so far. Resentment Broom, I would hands down, will be the best one with a close second with Starry Sky Heritage. Those two so far. Uh, this one right here, Diffusing Prism, increases M attack by 5% upon casting AoE attack for each one target hit, increases magical damage and piercing damage by... Okay, so now we're going to change my pan again. This... And these two right here are fantastic. Either one of these is going to be optimal. I am going. Mm -hmm. I I think I think I like this one a little bit better because it does you know for each target hit it increases magical damage and piercing damage dealt by five percent up to ten percent. So if we have to look and see the maximum. So it increases the magic attack by 10%, which is beautiful. And then when you're doing an AOE attack for each target hit, it does 10% up to 20%, which I think is significantly better. I would probably stick to using, yeah, this one right here is probably my favorite one so far. This is probably the best one, I would say hands down. Um, this is probably my favorite one hands down. I think that I would, yeah, this is the best one. I think this is the best one hands down um i would definitely use that and then or the resentment broom both of these are really good so these are gonna be for me is i think this is probably my number one this is my number two and then this is my number three because you know that hp increase is where it's gonna be good with that magic and this is always consistent and then this right here is going to be a huge steroid when you hit more people with aoe so yeah this is my number one this is my number two this is my number three and then the cornucopias are always good you know for whatever you know it's it's all good around free to uh free to use staff if you're getting the um if you're getting the 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 battle pass if you're getting the battle pass that's what i want to say so yeah so i would say that i would use that in that order one is the diffusion prism two is a resentment broom and three is going to be the starry sky heritage and then if we're looking at the trinkets um with the trinkets, you know, decreases the damage from range attacks. I'm, I, I like, I like this survivability from range attacks of some other mages and archers. I think it's going to be pretty decent. Um, this one right here, cooling powder is always good. You know, anything that prevents healing received is really nice. I think is really good. 
Um, I will. Origin Glass is a grants immunity to move and speed down. This is also pretty good as well. Um, yeah, this one's also pretty good as well. You could go with the the old scrolls of Augusti, which grants one ally with one random level two buff and speed one for two turns. Uh, can be used three times. This one's just utility if you're gonna be, you know, for other allies. It's whatever. I I, I probably wouldn't use this one. It's not bad. I just wouldn't use this one personally. Um, let's see. The Shroud of Val uh, Void is pretty good because if you're going against people with other magic, the that magical damage taken by 50% is pretty good. I've used this on my Momo and I do like that skill a lot. I like this a lot on my Momo because it protects her from magic damage that I know is coming. Um, Spring Pill heals the character for 20% HP and dispels one debuff. This is a really good one. Spring Pill is, is a really good one. I definitely think that's a pretty good one to go with as well. And probably Mystery Guardian. Um, when attacked from the front, gains bonus P defense. And then you... This one's okay as well. It's not the best. And then this one gains immunity to disrupt when healthy. And then when you're healthy, your M defense increases. This one's okay as well. Um, but yeah, those would be the, the trinkets. I think my favorite one is probably going to be either the Mysterious Deflection Device or my second favorite one is going to be the Spring Pill. Those two are the ones I would more likely go with the most. And third, I would probably end up using the Shroud of Void because, you know, magic damage. And then finally, when it comes to the totems, um, the totem that I like, let me see if I can find it. Uh, when uh, let's see, what is this one? When initiating an attack, if the character's max HP is greater than the target, uh, so this one's okay. Uh, if you're gonna be having the a lot of HP um, gear like that Starry Rod or something like this, and you're gonna have a lot of HP on her, this one's pretty good. As long as your HP, your max HP is higher, you get that 10% damage. But honestly, I think the one that I would probably use is let's see if I can, I can't is the one that gives the shield. Um, at the start of a fight, um, that's the one I would like, like this one right here. Here we go. The desire for temperance at the start of the battle gains a physical shield equal to 25% of the character's physical attack plus M attack. The shield cannot be dispelled. I would get, I would get this one personally, just added on to those extra shields. Cause if you really think about it, if you have that shield that's added on to your other shields, um when you use that one skill right here that's going to make this skill ice assault do significant damage that's how my brain is working right now so if you have a very high-end shield and you're using this right here that's going to probably make it do a lot of damage especially because that's based off of uh the shields are based off of her m attack and you should have her with a lot of magic attack because like even just off the base um she has a pretty decent magic attack uh, level when she's uh, level 60. And I think we can actually figure that out right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Why not? Why not? Um, no, I can't. I can't level it up. And I don't have a list. But yeah, well, you, know, you can look at it later. <laughs> I know. I just, I just blue balled you guys. My bad. But yeah, so that's my spotlight for Simona. I would definitely use her in a team. I mean, it's all about zoning. So use her to be able to zone units, the zone characters. Um, she's a union character. So she works with all of these other characters for union, which they do have some pretty significant, uh, you know, you got Gloria in there. So she's a very good zoner. She does some pretty decent damage. And she's also still pretty tanky because of the fact that she's an ice mage. And ice mages always have some really good uh damage and not damage but uh really good survivability uh so yeah so that's it for my simona spotlight review guys uh we're trying to hit 1000 by the end of the year and if we hit 500 we're doing a giveaway so please make sure that you go ahead and subscribe and the details on the giveaway will definitely be there once we hit that 500 and if we hit a thousand by before the end of this year we're doing another giveaway as well so i definitely want to see you guys later on the next one and i'll catch you in the next video peace